Good afternoon and welcome once again to my daily chat. Yes, every day. Uh, this is episode number 574 and the topic today is wrapping up this year, wrapping up this past year, is what I said. What are you willing to release? And uh, this may be surprising, it may be helpful, it may be challenging, it may be inspiring. We'll see. Before I jump into that, let me choose myself so you know who I am and why I do these every day. <laughs> there is a method to my madness. My name is Barry Selby. Welcome to my daily broadcast. Um, I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert, and I help strong, successful women, high-achieving women, in fact, create and find balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine, which is why for the last two years plus, I've done these talks every day called Messages for the Masculine to Inspire Your Feminine Heart. And so we're, today we're at episode number 574, and this topic is not necessarily just for women, although a lot of my female friends are dealing with this, same as I am and other men are as well, at least the ones who are awake enough to think about it. So this may become a sort of a series towards the end of the year, like the last four or five days, because I realized as I had put together today's topic, there's a couple other ones in the back burner. So this one's about what are you willing to release? I'm also going to do one, probably one on gratitude, maybe something else as well, we'll see, because I'm realizing there's some separate ways I want to focus on this past year. So let's look back at 2018, shall we? Um, and let's do this on a personal level, not a political level, because there's so many things we could talk about, but I want to keep this more close to home. So the topic today is, what are you willing to release from this past year? That's what the theme's about. And I'll, I'll go first <laughs> to give you some suggestions, because actually I'll start with the how first, or should say, sorry, the benefits first, and then I'll jump into my own things to release. So first of all, the reason for this, the reason why letting go of things is good, is because if you're looking to have a brand new year with a new start being 2019, and I'll do a bunch of stuff about launching up the new year in the right way next week, it's good for you to create space for that. So just go ahead and say, I'm gonna make some new resolutions and jump to the new year fresh and ready to go without making the room for that. It's kind of like trying to stuff more stuff into the same bag that's already overstuffed, if you get what I mean. So. One of the benefits of this is it's not that hard to do. The challenge is from remembering to do it. And so that's why, I'm, that's why I like presenting this because it's something you can do very easily. And so I'll go first. I no longer, no, no reason delays any further. So for me, a large part of the journey this past year has been inward for me. I've been doing a lot of, um, I won't say self-reflection, that's too fancy a term. But I've definitely been watching my own process through this past year of the work I've been doing, both in the world and internally. And frankly, these Facebook Lives have been a very um, evocative and provocative method for me to unearth things inside of myself. Because when I do these broadcasts, oftentimes when I, when I finish the broadcast, I'm sort of shown things, or I'm not sure that sounds fancy. I reflect on things that I've said and notice things that have come through me and things that still come through after the broadcast to give me, room, give me pause to think. So one thing I'm gonna let go of this year, one thing I'm gonna let go from this year is judging that, because I was saying, no, I should be beyond this, I should know this stuff by now. And also the judgment that I was carrying that, I should have said that on the broadcast, and now signed off, it's too late, which I did a few times this year, just to be clear and transparent. So I'm letting go of those judgments because they're really limiting my ability to connect and tap into a deeper connection and message to share with, with you, my viewing audience, even if there's only one of you at times. Also, I'm gonna let, let, me, let me go of that one too. I'm letting go of the judgment about how much my Facebook lives have been viewed because it's been all over the map. Some land, some don't. Some people see them, some don't. But to be honest, I do get some amazing, wonderful feedback from people who love what I share and love my consistency. And that's why I need to keep going. Because the truth is, not only is it being guided from inside, but I'm being reflected from outside, and that I really appreciate. So let's move to other areas of things I'm letting go of this year. And I'm gonna say this one bluntly. I'm letting go of playing small. I've come across people in our conversations this year about next steps, which I've talked about, considered, and then put on the back burner. And now I'm saying that's no longer the case. What I'm literally talking about, which I'll talk about more next week, I think, we'll see as that comes about, is that these Facebook Lives have been a proving ground for me in a way. They, and I, I know I keep coming back to Facebook Lives, but I will find a way to get away from them at some point. 
But having done so many of these, 574 including today's, I've really gotten clear that my gift to speak, inspire and serve is getting stronger and stronger and stronger. And to do it through a video format is one op option, but I'm really clear that my real um, passion and next step to be bigger rather than smaller is to speak on live stages, to be in front of audiences where there's live interaction and direct feedback. And as I'm saying that, I'm getting kind of chills saying it because that's the next step that I know is in alignment for me. So I'm saying this now because somebody watching this might be saying, I have some, some, an audience I want you to speak in front of or they want, they've got to connect me with somebody who's got a big event they want me to speak at. Yes, I'm plugging myself that way, but also I'm scaring myself that way at the same time. So that's out there. So other things that I'm letting go of this year. Um, and it's on the same, it's on the same theme as playing small and you may or may not be able to, by the way, all these things I'm sharing, you may or may not be able to relate to. So I'll let you think about yourself, what things you're willing to let go of. And I'll, I'll drop in some more, of the, some more of the common ones in a moment. But in the same plane about playing small, I've had some shifts this year, been opening up to a new possibility in, in life and in the way I do things. And so I'm also letting go of the old attachments I was carrying to the being comfortable, small and invisible, which I had in certain places. So that may be related to, that may be something you can relate to yourself because for many of us, we don't always claim the bigness, that's a word, <laughs> that we deserve. That we actually play smaller and play safer because we're afraid of making a mistake, afraid of being hurt, and afraid of succeeding. Yes, afraid of success. Is it just me that has that one carrying around? I think maybe other people do too. So that's another piece of the puzzle which is about letting go of things we can let go of this year. Now, some things I would recommend you look at, because I'm going to say this for myself as well, is things you can let go of from this past year may involve old, incompleted, relationships. Since this is my general area of expertise and conversation, for many people, not you of course, but maybe for many people out there, there's an attachment to old relationships you haven't let go of yet. And again, as I said at the beginning, one of the ways to embrace and accept and, and move into new intentions for the new year, and I'll tell you about that next week, letting go of the ultimate room for that is important. So if you're looking to have a new, if you're single at the moment, and you're looking to attract into your life a new relationship, a new paradigm, a new experience in love and romance, any attachments you carry to the old ones are getting in the way of that. So I'm inviting you to consider what old relationships that may not even have happened this past year, but maybe from before that, that you still have an investment in or still have an attachment to or still have a need of some sort to complete. My suggestion to you is the next couple of days before the new year is do what it takes internally to let go of that. Hi, Grissel. I'm glad. Well, thanks for joining in quietly and good to see you too. And by the way, just since you did that, I have to say this. This is Facebook Live first, by the way, in case you haven't seen my broadcast before. If you're watching on YouTube, I'm repeating what people say on the screen because you won't see that on the YouTube broadcast or replay. Okay. So to continue. So attachments to past relationships will get in the way of you having what you want in new relationships. This is true in any area, by the way. If you're attached to an old um, place to live, it's hard to find a new one. If you're attached to an old... Um, well, even this one, self-image, it'd be hard to attract a new one. So this, this attachment thing, this not willingness to let go, is a block we use to stay comfortable in the old that we know is familiar. Now, for many of us, that old paradigm, as much as it's familiar, isn't actually good for us. We actually may be using it as a wedge between us and what we really want, excuse me. Yes, as a wedge between what we want, what, who we are and where we want to go. Because what we want to go, again, as I said earlier, is a risky and challenging and we may have a fear of success. So it's safer to stay comfortable in the old because at least we know that's familiar and we know the um, environment of that. But all these things that we deal with that are holding us back, we have the power to let go of. And this is the thing. When I say what you're willing to let go of this past year, for many of us, those things that we're holding on to are purely in here ain't out there and it's not other people doing it to us nine times out of, nine times out of, nine times out of ten now having said that a little caveat if you're still in a relationship that you really know you should have left ten years ago all right ten weeks ago ten days ago it may be time to cut the cord now 
Yes, you may be saying, well, I'll hold off till after Christmas because it's too nice a time to have a breakup. And I've been through one of those before, so I know what it feels like. It's better to cut the cord now when it's a, when it's in transition between Christmas and New Year's. Not to say it's the best time to do it, but doing it now before you start a new paradigm. Again, someone said, old relationship energy you're holding on to. If you're in a relationship that should be an old relationship now, it may be time to let go of that too. So having made put, brought you down on that one, let me raise it back up again. So again, maybe what you're going to let go of this past year is maybe the way you've been eating. Yes, even a diet change. And I'm not talking about going on a strict diet. I'm talking about maybe you eat differently in this coming year. Maybe you want to eat more organic food or you want to eat more home-cooked food. Maybe you want to learn to cook for yourself, for example. So maybe you want to let go of the old way of doing things, which was the convenience of fast food or eating at restaurants or not getting the best groceries. Again, letting go of old things makes room for the new things. And I'm using this as a very simplistic model, an example, because if you just see what I've said, there's a spectrum, there's a range of things from small to large, from easy to hard, that letting go of makes room for the new. And as I said, there's a, there's more piece I'm going to be sharing, I think, in the next few days, it feels like it is, for what you want to do to let go of this past year to make room for what's coming through next year. Because, yes, January 1st, everyone's going to start putting out the news resolutions. And you know, if you're in the email list, like I'm on the email list, you're getting lots of notifications saying, join me now for kick off the new year with this new visioning, new thing, new technique. Before you do that, before you do any of that, look at the past year and be willing to let go of what's not working in any area of your life, whether it's relationship, health, finances, accommodation, spirituality, friendships, whatever it is. Stuff that didn't work for you up to now is not likely to work for you in the future. This is kind of common sense, and it's logical as well, which I'm pretty good at. And what I'm really clear about is the more you can get clear about what you don't need anymore, and the more you want to let go of it, it, frees up the energy for you to lift up and be able to attract what you really do want. And I have kind of become a master at that in some ways. There's something I realized earlier today, and we'll say it now because it's something that's been on my mind. It's gonna change my marketing, I think. Um, <laughs> I guess I'm putting it on. It's totally unreal. Well, it isn't, it isn't related. I had a download this morning um, reflecting on the fact that I've had eight careers before this, at least seven or eight, I think. I lost track. But when I started in my business world, in my I mean the business world, in, in the world of business after high school, my first career was in computer programming. And the reason I'm saying that is because I've really gotten clear that that was a skill that has so actually supported me all the way through to now. Not because I still program computers, because I don't. However, what I do have with my background in psychology and spirituality is a toolkit that lets me see into people's patterns. Same as computer programs that don't work. When I see people doing things that aren't working for them, I can usually get a sense of where that is in their logic or in their, in their belief structures where it can be changed. And so I'm realizing more and more, I'm going to look at where I started to where I come now because it comes together. And what I'm going to do is letting go of the judgment that my past careers didn't serve me because I'm realizing as of today, they do really well. So that's another claim. I'm, well, that's a letting go and, 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 and an accepting in, as it, so to speak. So I'm going to leave you some homework, of course, because it's getting the time of year where homework is important because we want to get clear for the new year. And I'll put some links in the comments for a discovery session if you want to sign up for that my self-love practice because it's time for that and my last reminder of my um, holiday specials because I'm closing those out um, I think this weekend it's coming soon so if you're interested in those things it's your last chance to get in on these special holiday prices <laughs> um, so your homework is this make a list pen and paper is fine or pencil and paper even and write down what it is you're willing to let go of for this past year. What is it that no longer serves you? What is it doesn't work? What does it hold you back? What is it that you just really been carrying around for the last two years and you don't even need to anymore? And you're like, why am I still carrying this? Make a list of all those things. And when you've got the list complete, and I would say take some time on it, like write it down, then put it aside and come back to it later on because things all percolate through your mind. When you're done, crumple up the paper. That's why I'm not using a computer, but pen and paper is good or pencil and paper is good. And burn it. Yes, burn it. Now, caveats. If you're in Southern California, be very careful where you burn it because we've had enough forest fires or Wi-Fi, so I don't want to have you do that, but burn it in a container you control, like in a fireplace or in a, um, a foil uh, oven pan. You can contain, contain somewhere where it's not windy because it's really windy today and that would blow sparks everywhere. 
but basically if you burn it it frees up the energy so not only are you choosing to let go of it internally by burning it you're actually symbolically releasing it as well so that's your homework and I think that's it oh again comments uh, I'll put those posts I'll put the links in the comments and questions comments about this broadcast please put them below and I'll respond when I sign off replays this is my Facebook Live, as I mentioned earlier. This is my personal page where I broadcast this. That then goes on to my pers my business page on Facebook. So personal page on Facebook is Barry Selby. Business page on Facebook is barryselby.author. And then that's the links after facebook.com, by the way. And then these go, to some of my YouTube, these go onto my YouTube channel, which is also Barry Selby. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And in there is a playlist called Messages from the Masculine, which is where this lives with all the other ones. You can watch any of those you can if you want to. You can also search during the, through the whole list to find the ones that are relevant to you. That's one of the benefits of YouTube. It's much easier than Facebook for that. Oh, thank you, Adriana. I appreciate you loving my, my Facebook Live feed <laughs> every day. Although in the new year, I've got some things brewing. I might be, I'm actually looking at setting up a membership program, which will be separate from visit public, and I might do less broadcasts because of that. We'll see. Lots of things are brewing, as you can tell. I've been percolating some ideas for a while now. So again... Facebook Live, YouTube, podcast is where they go as well. My podcast is Messages from the Masculine. You can subscribe to that on iTunes and download the audio versions of my broadcast. You can listen to them wherever you go. With that, you've got your homework. I'll have the links in the comments that I suggested, and I do invite you to take care of yourself. And again, you've got your homework. That I recommend you do tonight, tomorrow, and the next few days before the new year so you can close out the old year the right way. And I'm back in tomorrow with another talk, maybe on gratitude, I think, might be the I'll talk about that. So with that, I thank you for watching. If you have any questions and you want to have support, reach out to me and uh, take advantage of my offers in the comments. And I'll see you again tomorrow, 5 p.m. Pacific time, at the same place, right here. With that, I thank you for watching. I'll see you again then. I'll see you again then. I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care. Bye.